He said, they're all eating like there's no tomorrow. He said, I don't want you doing that at this time. He said, I want you seeking me. Because I want to open up the cities where Satan has locked them up. And the people cannot come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the anointing has gone out of the church. And the Lord said, through the priests that I have in this day, who will obey my voice. He said, there will be a return of my power back into the church. But he said, there will be also with that the return of people, amen, who have been driven out are going to be driven back by the power of God into the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, the people are coming. Shout at your neighbor. Said they're coming. They're coming. But they're not coming for the fishes and the loaves. I said they're not coming for the supper parties. They're not coming for the entertainment. They're not coming, amen, because they're looking for a husband or a wife. They're coming because of Jesus. They're coming because of the power of God that is going to be put on display. The miracles of yesterday are getting ready to become the miracles of today. What God did in times past in this country is going to come back. But it's not going to come back by this weak need. Spaghetti spine preachers that we got in the pulpits today. We need some strong men that will get back into prayer. Get back in the days of pastor. Get back in the dedication, amen, of selling their life out. And then God is going to open the windows of heaven. And he can put a pour out. in this day and the ministry amen is coming out of you I said it's coming out of you you get ready to be used by the power of God I said you get ready to be used in a way you haven't been used Hallelujah. he said watch everybody go look at, look at this generation the Holy Ghost said to me look at all of this generation sucking up to everything
there are people that are getting healed in the Catholic Church. on the behalf of the person that is believing Hallelujah. And because of their faith, God is healing. But I said, God did not start that revival and he told me to prophesy to the people and say how that he was going to tear it down and that it was going to come to nothing. And I told all my California friends that and they quit calling me for a while. They thought I was crazy. And I told them, I said, listen, you people said that I was one of the strongest prophets that you'd ever met that had ever come to California. And I said, now you can't hear me? Hallelujah. I said, you watch. Something is going to happen to that man that's running that thing. know that I told you that God didn't start it, but he told me he's going to stop it. Because they're making God look like a fool. Hallelujah. Making him look like a crazy person. And I said, God is not crazy. I said, he's going to put an end to it. And I prophesied it. And when it happened, Hallelujah. I knew the person to call in California that would spread it to everybody. And I called him. I said, what do you think about that revival now? And what do you think about all the sheep that are scattered without a shepherd now? I said, God said I didn't start it, but I'm going to finish it. I'm going to put an end to it. And God put an end to it. Hallelujah. And listen, when you get prophecy like that, and everybody's in agreement with whatever that is, just because of a few that are getting healed, you can go to the Catholic Church and people are going to get healed there. Hallelujah. But is Catholicism, Catholicism the right path that God has ordained His people to take? No. Hallelujah. Any more than some of these paths that Christians are taking today and this day under the ministries that call themselves ministries that are under an open heaven. They're under an open heaven, all right. Judgment is going to fall on their head. Hell is going to open up around them. But God is going to birth some new ministries. Put your hand on your neighbor and say, you might be the next ministry that God is going to bring to the door of the church. But when he brings you to the door of the church, you're not coming the way the world, amen, has ordained a minister to come, or when the spirit of religion has ordained ministers to come to the door of the church. Amen. When you come to the door of the church, you're coming with the fullness of the Holy Ghost upon your head and upon your life. And there's going to be a word of God in your mouth. Amen. That when you speak that word, that word is not going to fall to the ground like a Samuel prophet. And when you prophesy, that word is going to come to pass, and God is going to let it come to pass, so that people are going to know that you've heard from God. Hallelujah. Everybody was going to that revival. I said, you better stay away from that. I said, God, get ready to shut that down. God, get ready to pull the plug. God, get ready to pull his skirt up. Brother Richardson, I don't know why you're talking like that. That's what some of my friends said to me. I don't understand that, Brother Richardson. This is a real move of God. I said, well, the Lord's having pity on the people that are in it, that are believing, and having mercy on those that, are, that have come with faith, believing that. People want to believe that God is in something. Right? Whether God is in it is another thing. I can, I can tell I touched a sore spot. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because a thing fills up with a lot of people doesn't mean that it's, that it's God. The Catholic Church got more money than charismatic people. 
the Mormons, their, their religious institute is stronger than the charismatic spirit-filled institution of what you and I are part of today right here in America. They're, they're money strong. And they are people strong. Hallelujah. But does that mean God is with them? Hebrews 1 and 1. 
But it, it but happened these last days spoken to us by his son. So under the law, before Jesus was born, they heard the voice of God, the prophets, as well as the fathers of faith. When Jesus came, he spoke now, and his voice was going to be heard. When I get to the book of Revelations, I find a scripture that says this. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God shall say to the church. Amen. Did you hear that? Yes. So I know that there's the voice of the Father, the voice of the Son of God, and the voice, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost. Say amen. 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 Most people, if they've heard anything, it's just the voice of the Spirit. And that voice is a comforter. Tell your neighbor, say, that voice is a comforter. That voice is a comforter. That means that voice will come and comfort you. But it will not talk to you like a father. Because that voice is the voice of the Father or God. His voice is much different than the comforter. And when you hear that voice, he's not playing no games. Nor has he come to comfort you. Hallelujah. One day, if you go on and decide to go on with God, you'll hear it. And it's one voice you don't want to hear because most of the time, Amen. When you hear that voice, it is straightforward. You don't feel a lot of love in it. He demands something and wants you and expects you to obey now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The comforter will come. Love you. Comfort you. Talk sweet to you. Hallelujah. Jesus, when he came, the voice of the Son of God was going to be heard. And those that heard his voice, read, go home and read John 5 tonight before you go to bed. Where it said, Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. And I saw my father quicken the dead. Who did God quicken from the dead? Enoch, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Elijah, Samuel, David, Jonathan, Sarah. Everybody that you read in Hebrews 11 that heard the voice of God that didn't have a Bible. None of these people in Hebrews 11 had a Bible. Amen. Everybody's trying to get faith with a Bible, and all these people had it without a Bible. True. Why did they have it? Because they heard God speak to them. And the scripture said, when they heard God speak, it quickened them from a realm of death that Adam had made them fall into. Hallelujah. See, you that have heard the voice of God are not the walking dead anymore. Touch somebody and say, you've been raised from death unto life. You've been raised from death unto life. Blessed is he that hath part in the first resurrection, for he will not be hurt by the second death. And who are those that have part in the first resurrection? Those that have been raised through Christ? Those that have believed upon Jesus? And have heard the voice of the Son of God? Have Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. Amen. Say amen. amen. You can't deceive somebody that knows the voice of the Son of God. You can't lead a people astray that knows the definite sound of the Son of God's voice. You can't take them down a path, amen, and fool them. Because they know the voice and understand what it is that is with them. 
my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow but they will follow me into green pastures Hallelujah. how many wants to follow him into green pastures and Jesus said in John 5 all that I see my father do I have been given the same authority to do what he has done in the past even as I saw my father quicken those that were in death unto life you remember Moses at the burning bush that God announced to him? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were dead as far as physical death. They were already buried. And God said to Moses at the burning bush, I am not the God of the dead, but I am the God of the living. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And why were they alive? And why did God consider them alive? Because they had heard the voice of God. Hallelujah. And not only heard it, but believed it and acted upon it and rose up from out of Adam's death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now Jesus said, the same power has been given to the Son of God. And he said in John 5, the time shall come and now is. Some of say now. Now. Not 2014, not 2025, not 2013, but way back there in that time that he was standing in. He said, now is the time come that they that are dead shall hear the voice, or they that are in their graves shall hear the voice of the Son of God and get up. But he wasn't talking about the boneyard over here at Laurel Land. I know where Laurel Land is over here at I-35 on Laurel Land Boulevard. Jesus looked at men and said, You are graves which do not appear that men can't see you as a grave. And they walk over you as if you're not there. Is it in the Bible? Amen. Jesus said, You are graves. But he said, the time shall come that they that are in their graves shall hear the voice of the Son of God and will get up. Yeah. Tell somebody tonight, you've already got up. You've already, got up. you've already shaken off your grave clothes. Hallelujah. You're not a dead man walking anymore. You've been raised unto life. You've been raised under the power of the gospel. You've been raised under the supernatural and under the miraculous. You're not living anymore in the regions of death or damnation, but you've moved out of the darkness and have been translated over into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Let us show forth the praises of God. The Bible said, who has translated us out of the kingdom of darkness and has moved us over into the kingdom of God's dear Son. I'm living in the kingdom of where Jesus is ruling and reigning. And he is not a ruling and reigning there, but he's speaking there. Hallelujah. I challenge you to read the whole book of John 5. Time shall come and now is, and now is. Now. Not 2013, but now back then. That they that are in their graves, because I saw my father speak to the dead people that were in Adam's death. And those that heard the voice of God got up. Now God has given this same power to the Son of God to speak to the dead that are walking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That they that will hear shall get up from out of their graves and live. Touch your neighbor say, live now. Live now. You have not been appointed unto death. You have been appointed unto life. Come on. Come. The first man, Adam, was a living soul. The second man, Adam, Jesus, was a quickening spirit. Amen. The Bible said, by, for by one man's disobedience, Adam, the first man, and the first son of God, because the Bible called Adam the son of God. Amen. Amen. Do all sons obey God? No. For 
this first one that was born from the dust of the earth, the clay of the ground, that God called them the Son of God. Go find the scripture where it says, Adam, the Son of God. Hallelujah. He was the Son of God because he didn't come out of man, he came out of God. Hallelujah. He was created by God and not out of the loins of a man. Say amen. And by one man's disobedience, I, I should just stick to preaching and leave the teaching alone. By one man's disobedience, amen, sin was passed on to many as well as death, which is the wages of sin, is passed on to every man that came out of Adam. Say amen. amen. But this second man, Adam, Jesus said this. Are you listening? Amen. Those that were with him that were hearing his voice and following him. Did you hear that? Hearing his voice and were following him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I am come that you might have a life. For by one man's obedience, by going to the cross and obeying the commandment, remember the commandment that he had to obey? To go to Calvary? And in obeying that, hallelujah, by one man's obedience, life shall reign unto many unto righteousness. Righteousness shall reign unto life. Hallelujah. Just as sin through Adam, the first Adam, reigned unto death. Now Jesus, tell your neighbor, say, if Jesus took your sin away, why are you still looking for a paycheck? Why are you still looking for the wages of sin? Well, the scripture said, for all have sinned. You're right, past tense. Touch your neighbor and say, Jesus nailed all your sins on the cross. All your sins on the cross. And the scripture said, he took your sin away. Now tell your neighbor this, have you either got your sin still in it, or Jesus took it from you? If he took sin from you and you're not committing sin or walking in sin, how can you receive the wages of it? I can't get no help here tonight. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm alive in God. I'm alive in God. I'm alive in the power of God. And every day that I walk, I walk to live. I don't walk to get ready to die. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm living in the land of the living. I'm living under the spout where the glory comes out. I'm living in the region of life. I've been moved out of the darkness. I've been moved out from under the shadow of death. And Jesus took death, and the Bible said he nailed it to his cross, and the scripture said he abolished death. The Bible said he abolished death. Let me say it one more time. He abolished death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you abolish something, you go away with it. It's no more. He took away not only your sin, but he took away the penalty of sin. And he nailed it to his cross. And because Jesus is living in you, there's life that's living in you. And because the life of Amen is living, Amen, through obedience to the commandment of what the Holy Ghost is saying to you, straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and few that find it. There's a new generation that's rising up in the earth, and the rising up under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and they're living under an open heaven because they're living under the same heaven that, that God opened for His Son Jesus. 
say, shake off your death. Shake off everything that they preach to you. Live a little life. Get into the life. Because you're standing.